Okay, we're in. Hey, it's Armin here again with another Unity tutorial. This one covers the dialogue system I've just created for my upcoming game, Above the Stars. These are scriptable objects for the easy creation of the dialogue sequences you see now, making possible things like multiple speakers, each with their own unique properties, which I showcase, but I'm not going to do a bunch of silly voices. Or will I? <laughs> It's, it's pretty simple and open, so it can be extended greatly, with things like this type in effect, voice overlay, and even events triggering, triggering after a set of dialogue is over. Like this camera shake leading to a whole new speech. See? How cool was that? Get the full tutorial below, and thanks for watching. Uh, Alright, sometimes I'm a bit too cool, but hopefully that gave the... In the impression about what this video is uh, in regards to today. Okay, so we're going to get right into it. That's the full effect. So we're going to start from scratch with as few cuts as possible. Tutorial. Okay, so we've got a brand new script here. Right from scratch. Uh, I don't need the web for this actually. Let me turn that off. First things first, as always, we're going to start out with a few variables, namely the... Um, Actually, I think we should probably start with the scriptable object variable, so I'm just going to copy it over. It's going to be a... Oh, I'll write in. It's going to be a, um, a struct, 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 which we'll need to be able to serialize so we can actually um, fill it in the inspector. So, so system.serializable will allow us to use it in the inspector, and then we're going to go... Okay, I'm going to do a public struct, public struct... And we're just going to call it speech group. So each each section of speech will have this. So each of the things you had there. So you had like one block had one speaker, then the next block had another speaker. So we're going to have a public speaker, which we also have to make. So we'll do that up here actually, which will be just be a simple uh, enum, just to like keep track of the names. It could be anything really. So we'll we'll have we'll have me, Armin. We'll have. Uh, Mac from the first game and in that example we had bad guy so we may as well just keep with it okay so we got a public speaker or oh, we would if I actually name this variable so we've got public speaker we've got name that current speaker public speaker public audio clip because obviously we want that um, voice overlay uh, actually, we can add that later. We'll, we'll, we'll just stick with the very basics as is, and then I'll try and, if we have time, I'll add in stuff as we go. We're going to do the actual um, string itself. And for that, we want to use a text area, because obviously um, it's going to be quite difficult to just do it in a smaller box if you're doing a few paragraphs or something like that. That's just going to be a public string, and we'll say speech text. So we've got the current speaker, and we've got the speech text. Uh, we can go into artworks as well because we'll probably need that straight away which will just be a public list of sprites or an array of sprites I should say public I'll, I'll need a unity engine.ui for that obviously dot ui public sprite yeah I'm not sure if you that does inherit from ui but in any case there is and that'll be the artworks for each each speaker and we'll just link them up so we'll make the first artwork that second third they won't actually be inherently uh, linked if that makes sense so you'll have to keep keep mindful of that there's probably a way to do it better but never mind uh okay that's all we need for now and we're gonna do this in um uh, scriptable objects and you'll see why i'm not sure it's the best use of scriptable objects but nevertheless it's the way I went with it, and I've never really used scriptable objects before, so it was an interesting uh, excursion into that. We'll just call this uh, speech. My computer ever catches up. Speech script object uh, tut because it's tutorials. Reload. Let me drag that over here. Speech script object tutorial. Um, Again, this is a really strange way of doing it because essentially all I'm really gonna have here is just I don't need any of this. I'm literally just gonna have a um, 
public list of public list of that text box dot speech group it's just gonna be a list of those speech groups so a a, a, a whole speech is just gonna be several smaller speech segments if that makes sense that's essentially what we're going for you could do some other stuff just to make it easier to recognize what you're referencing and also you could have something like a uh, speech number and that would that would stop um like a speech being repeated for example if that makes sense so you, it's when, whenever you play a speech you could make you could check all the ones that have been played already so you're not repeating yourself but again that's something that we'll probably leave out for now public string speech name as well if, if you want prop i don't know if you have like a a system where you can go back through dialogue and repeat them that might be helpful but yeah that's literally all the uh all all this is going to be so very straightforward in line okay uh to be able to actually use this we're gonna have to create an asset menu we'll call it uh, you want to put a file name in which will be the default file name and we'll just say new speech or new tutorial speech and we'll also put a menu name equals tutorial speech and i'll show you what this does in a second if you're not familiar with scriptable objects so if i save this now uh obviously this has to be a scriptable object i was wondering why that wasn't working so now once this reloads we can go create give it a second nope it's still not loaded almost there but there you go. So now we can create a new tutorial speech like that. And we can fill this with, uh, say, three different speeches. And we'll say, first tut speech. And then you can add a bunch of different elements. So we can have me speaking, then the bad guy speaking. I'm bad. I'm not. I'm not sure why they'd speak in that order. But yeah. You get it. And obviously, uh, this would make no sense. You probably want to put more text in there for the text effect to work better, but we'll get to that. Okay, so that's our first tutorial speech. How are we going to actually get that to display? Well, what we need to do is create the UI element of it, which is just, in my case, this text pop-up. I'm super lazy, so I'm just going to duplicate it. And call it test tutorial pop-up. And just go through it with you because otherwise I'll have to make it piece by piece and that involved a lot of scaling and getting work getting it working with my own UI so this has the uh, this is just essentially a big button uh, let me turn the alpha up it's essentially just one huge button so you can click any of it to get it to progress inside is an image which is the speaker which I haven't anchored correctly I'll do that on the other one as well Uh, image, name, no, I haven't anchored any of this correctly, hang on, oh, there we go, okay, so it's got the speaker, it's got the, it's got the image, sorry, the icon, it's got the name of the speaker, and it's got the text, so quite straightforward, and all those are just linked up here into the uh, text box manager, so let me remove this, and instead add the text box manager tutorial which only has an artwork section but we will now add all the other variables for that stuff yeah there we go so back to the text box manager tutorial and we'll just add the stuff to set so we'll call this speech stuff so this is all the stuff that actually uh, covers the speech itself so the speakers the speech group variable which could this could easily go into um into the scriptable object but i'm not sure which will be cheaper so i've just left it in here because this is obviously only being instantiated once i put it here in the hopes that it won't be too expensive here's all the stuff to set so you've got a 
Let me get rid of this for now because again, this is for the voice overlay. So you've got the icon, the name, the main text, and the canvas group, which will set the where the whole where the whole thing can be clicked or activated, or if it's just see through when not in use. So if we save that, that'll show up here, and then we can start to edit it in, uh, edit it in, um, like just populate it. So. This is quite slow. Any any minute now. Nope, it's not steady on. Yeah, there. Come on. There. Okay, there. I need to upgrade this computer. It's been a long, long time. Okay. So we'll put the image under speaker icon. We've put the name under speaker name. Put the main text there. And the canvas group is attached to the button itself. So we'll just put that there. Sweet. And we'll make her three artworks just to might as well populate this now and just make a watch these the same ones for these last two so these are all populated now we can actually get to work on them uh, filling them with what we need so how are we going to use this we don't need a start or an update uh, save for an awake function which we're going to use from as a we're going to make a singleton which i know people are going to get annoyed at me for but you know, I'm super lazy. There's much better ways to do this. If you don't know what a singleton is, essentially of this. So you create a static uh, reference to itself, basically. I'm pretty sure that's what a singleton is. I suck at all of this, so I do apologize in advance. So public static uh, text box man tut, and we'll call this instance. And then in the awake function, so as soon as this is made, instance equals this. And this will just allow us to access this from anywhere. Since we're only instantiating one version of the textbox manager tutorial, uh, this will be quite helpful. So we'll be able to call any of the public functions from any of the other scripts in the entire game without actually having to make a direct link to this variable, if that makes sense. Okay, I need to stop saying if that makes sense. Like, I mean, it didn't then this tutorial sucks okay the first thing we're going to do is uh, create the fill function so we're going to populate all these and then we can get into the start and stop coroutines uh, so fill speech will probably be the first thing we do void fill speech and that'll be private by default I should really start doing um, explicit privates <laughs> explicit privates like that <laughs> because uh it's easier to, it's just a better better habit to get into all right the first thing we're going to do is fill the uh the speech box and to do that we're going to need a copy of the whole speech so that's what we're going to have this is this is what's going to be passed in and then it's just going to be stored on this so you don't have to constantly read from any other script <clears throat> so that'll be that and the index will be which in this list we're currently on which which speech group it's kind of confusing how it goes back and forth i really should have just put this up here to make it make it simpler but whatever we're here now these uh where are we uh the speech progress just so you don't start a speech while one's already going on it's just to make stuff easier with coroutines because coroutines are always quite fiddly if you try to overlap them they can turn out quite strange so uh we'll we'll make a public void so start speech, and that's going to take in a script object speech, script object tutorial speech, and a delay. How have I spot this wrong? Oh my god, I'm the worst. I have to keep copying this now. I've actually put like full speech script instead of just, okay. And what this is going to do, it's going to start a coroutine, so there's no point in getting this is quite straightforward what's going to be more complicated is the coroutine itself so we're going to make an i enumerator start i'll just copy it from here start speech coroutine and that's going to take in i'll just copy this that's going to take in a speech and a delay first things first we're going to use this speech in progress if speech in progress 
sorry, I should that should be a while. While so while the speech is in progress, we're just gonna return now. And what this will do is um yield return now what this will do is just wait until the end of the frame and then go back so every frame i'll check if the speech if there's a current speech being played and if there is it'll just loop once that's done we want to make sure that this is set to true so obviously no other speech tries to play and so we don't forget uh, in the we're going to make a end speech coroutine as well and this is going to play after the last speech is played at the very very end so once you've started the speech click through all the dialogues this will play and we're going to speech in progress equals false here just so we remember to turn it off and allow for new speeches and for now we'll just be able to turn it off so this is in red otherwise unity gets angry at us okay so we're ready to start the coroutine itself uh, first things first, you just want to wait for seconds, pub, uh, yield, return, new, wait for seconds, and we'll just wait for the delay, so that's quite straightforward. And we want to obviously set the speech, current speech full is equal to speech that's being passed in and the current speech index equals zero so it starts at the beginning so you're not just picking up at the end and here is where we want to do the full speech so we want to set it all up and then do the full speech let's do that now so now that all these are set you don't actually need to pass anything into the full speech function we can just fill it from this current speech full Okay, so now that we've got the full speech, we can actually set up the fill speech uh, function. And we're just gonna do this based off the index and the full speech. And we're gonna start off by making a speech group S equals the full speech at the current speech index. So. It might, I feel like I've named these quite confusingly. So what this is returning is the, the single speech group. So an instance of a speaker and what he's saying. And obviously we could add anything else here. And we can also use that to get the uh, the sprite, the artwork. So that's the in, that's the individual block of text within a full dialogue between multiple characters. So from that we can, for example, get these the icon. We can change the icon. So speak icon dot sprite equals s dot uh, current speaker. So that's where the current speaker is of this single dialogue option. But obviously this is a enumerator, which we can't turn into a sprite. The spot sprites are stored in the artworks, and that's where you want to do it. But again, it's an enumerator, so you're gonna have to cast it as an int. And that's what I meant by you have to be mindful to make sure they match up. So make sure uh, Armin is the zero, the first index. He's at one, so the second and the third index. Make sure the first index is Armin, the second index is Mac, the third index is bad guy. Otherwise it'll mess up. You could probably link these, as I said, in a, a way that doesn't require such attention. You could just do it automatically, but this is how I've done it because I'm super lazy. And it shouldn't be too much of a big deal. You can always just, just as long as you're making sure you add at the end of each array, you should be fine. So we've set up the sprite there. We can set up the name as well. Speaker name equals, oh, sorry, dot text, because obviously it's a, it's a UI text box. Uh, S dot current speaker dot to string. And again, this is something that you could change. So instead of having a uh, speaker you could also have public string name because for example here we couldn't have that because that's not that's not a viable enumerator that's why I've had to put it as one word but if you're just having single word names and this is fine it's the easiest way to do it otherwise yep yeah, use a you add a string to the speech group function uh, what else have we got the text uh, which I've actually done differently here because I've done the whole um, type in effect main text dot text 
equals s dot. Okay, so that should fill each field in the um, text box. So the icon, the name, and the text itself. All right, so I just created this uh, script. I copied it from the other one. All it is doing is taking a test script. I've got to keep adding tutorial here. All it is is taking a test speech and playing it on the instance that we've made before. That's why we've added it as a singleton, so we can literally just use this function from anywhere. And as long as we have a speech attached to the script, we can make it pop up on the screen, which will be quite helpful because I feel like you'll need this to be quite versatile. And then you just can't click this button again, but you can ignore that. So what are we doing? We're filling the speech here. Let's uh, let's just try it out, see how it does with just this much in it. So it should, as soon as you press the button, fill the speech. So we'll give that a go. So once we click it, it should fill the speech. Boom. There we go. Armin says I'm not. So this is quite simple. I'll just put it above the start speech. The first thing you want to do, current speech index plus plus. So just increment the current speech index and then check it by the amount of speech groups in the speech, the entire the entire thing. So the amount of single dialogue from each character in the whole speech. So we're going to say current speech full. So that's the full speech. Speech groups are count. So every single one, if that's less than, oh sorry, greater than the current index, then do this because remember if they're equal then there won't be a slot because obviously this is this is always like plus one than the index like a if, if there's if there's one field this will be one and the index will be zero because the first field is counts as zero <clears throat> I, I say a lot of shit i'm never sure if it's a if it comes out clearly i guess only time will tell okay we've got that and if that works since we've I'm pointing at the screen. This is where the webcam helps. <laughs> We've got the current speech index incremented. So obviously if that did work and there is another one, all we have to do is full speech. Because again, that ba that works off um what is this? That works off the current speech index, which we've incremented there. Uh, if that doesn't work, then we're going to want to uh, let me comment this in as well just so and then I'll comment it out we'll get to it later I put it so every time you press next it plays a little sound just so you know you've clicked it because you always want to do those little things that little feedback here and there and then we're just going to start a coroutine end speech coroutine and that will be so after the very last one once there's no no dialogue left once you click the button it'll close it and it'll just fade it out so uh, speech in progress equals false Okay, so uh, we're going to do the fade in and out coroutines, which I'll go into detail on the on the start speech. And obviously it's just inversed on the out speech. There's another sound there that I'll comment out. This sound player, by the way, is just my own generic sound player. Uh, I might go into it in a bit. I'm not sure if I've done a tutorial on it, but it basically just allows you to. This is another singleton, so soundplayer.masters, a sound, the, the, the main sound player. This can be used multiple times, but this is the main one that's just like always present. And so at any point, you can just play a sound. And it uses things like. So you put a sound in, and then it uses a sound type to determine the volume. It's quite helpful. I might go into it. And if you don't want a tutorial on that, do leave it in the comments. I'm going to put float uh, CRGP alpha, so that's a, a canvas group alpha. We're going to start that at zero, so we're still fading in. And while it's less than one, it's less than one, we're going to add the time of plus equals time dot delta time. Uh, we're going to time that by two. So it'll take half a second to 
uh, come in. So obviously this will be if you're times if you're adding time dot delta time, this would finish after one second times by two half a second. Text box uh, canvas group dot alpha it's comma dot alpha equals crg blah, 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 alpha. Okay. And then yield return now. So it does this. It does this every frame. I'll do this every frame until it's at or above one, I guess. You, which you don't really want it to be. So I'll just do a. Uh, I'll just set this up here again. I'll set, just set it to equal to one so it doesn't overshoot. Even though I'm pretty sure it doesn't make a difference. I don't think you can even set it above one. And after that, we're going to do. Uh, blocks raycasts equals false and I'm not sure if this makes a difference but I'm gonna do interactable I think if you set it to non interact uh, non block raycast obviously you can't interact with it but just to be safe you know I'll just do it like that Oop. so once you start uh, sorry I mean true not, not false so once you do that it'll you, you can be you're able you're right, to click on the click on the button to progress through otherwise you wouldn't be able to click on it and for the end speech coroutine we're just going to essentially just do the opposite of that so that'll fade in then you can click to go next and then it'll fade out hopefully that's all made sense and what's the time only five minutes in this but i think we're at like half an hour or something overall be a terrible time okay so you click the button it fills it I'm not you click it and it does nothing because of course we're programming and that's what happens be right back uh, I immediately realized of course we haven't actually set the button itself to do anything Oop, I don't want to press play so the this this whole thing's a button once you click it you're going to need to go to the next uh, button press set speech next once you click it obviously otherwise it's doing nothing you're just clicking it it's just gonna say oh yeah I've been clicked now we click it oh, sorry no now we now we click the button to start the speech now we now it's actually interactable so now we'll block the raycast and it'll set it to the next speech there you go and there you go third one and then it'll close it once there's no more dialogue options left okay so that's uh that's essentially the basics of the entire thing pretty straightforward not too complicated and i hope it helped out i'll get into the more diverse options of it now for example the event group so i'll comment this out uh, i'll start i'll start at the top actually it'll probably be easier so let me copy i'm just gonna copy it get trying to try and wrap it up so it doesn't go too fast too, too slow sorry so this is for the event at the end of the speech what we've done is made a, a delegate end action and a static event so this can be assigned to anywhere from any any point the first place we're going to do it is here we're going to comment out this and this so you've got an explode sound and a test speech and with that we're going to make this the after speech function what this does is add trauma to the camera if we we did a we did a tutorial on tr camera trauma earlier i'll try and remember to link that if not it's one of the like four videos on this channel and again this is my master sound player which i'll probably do a tutorial on after if requested so we'll just add trauma to the camera play that explode sound and then most importantly it will start speech test speech 2 after a delay of one second with this you can chain speeches essentially so you can do have a set of dialogue then you can do something during a delay and then continue the dialogue which just makes a whole lot more versatile in my opinion so if i save that and i go to this button it should update make sure i've oh, damn it i haven't put any Thank you. I'm going to actually fill these speeches and these sounds off camera, so I'll be right back. Okay, before I continue, I think I'll actually do the voiceover part first. I say first, we've essentially already done that last part, so not not, not really doing that first. So you know how the 
after speech works now we add the after speech to that end speech action and then we play it here yeah uh, no sorry we play it here if it's null if it's not null sorry we invoke it so if anything's been decided to we invoke it and then for each each what this is doing is oh, sorry let me uh, tut. What this is doing is then removing all the actions from the end of the event. So if I add that camera shake and trauma and explosion, once I play it, it'll do it and then it'll remove it. Otherwise, each time it'll keep on, it'll do it twice fold. And I'm pretty sure this works, but it just occurs to me that I haven't tested it. I'll do it in a moment. So that's how you do that. And before we go further, we're actually going to put loads of sound effects in so you've got the start sound the next sound and most importantly we're going to add a audio source here and then we're going to add a speech clip inside the speech group so each speech group can now have its own audio file attached to it which is what you saw in the tutorial because now I'm going to make sure that it's actually going to play the sound because I haven't actually added that in yet I totally forgot to so under fill speech, we're going to put uh, all C dot stop first because if it's playing already, you don't want to play another one. I'm not I'm not entirely sure that if that's how it works, but just to be safe. And then if S dot speech clip does not equal null, so make sure there is actually something to play because sometimes you might not need one doing some sort of uh, auto generated audio then obviously you won't need to then you want to set the clip in the audio source to the s dot speech clip and then you want to play it forward c dot play uh, again uh, in my own games i've got this whole sound system set up so i sound player dot sound types dot uh, dialogue so I've got, I've got stuff like that which is quite helpful so if they change the level of dialogue this will change with it which yeah it's quite good oh, I should definitely do a tutorial on this it's quite a versatile system I've made there's probably better ones out there but this has fared me well in all my other works we'll give that a test now Okay, so now when we press play, it should fade in, play the whole dialogue sequence, so one after another with um, the voice overlay, and then after that it should go to, it should do a camera shake and explosion, and then after a second it should continue with the audio. Hey, it's Armin here. He's a scriptable object. Or will I? It's, it's pretty See? Get the f Yep. See there, uh, it works pretty much exactly how I had it originally. So that is essentially the whole tutorial. I know I've already said that and I'm going to say it for a third time because now I'm going to get into the text type in effect, which was very quick. So I'll actually just do that uh, on the fly. It all, all it uh, consisted of was um, uh, three more variables under the instance, which was the current speech text so that's the whole text the fill amount and whether or not it's currently running and it also used the update function i do like how it fills up the whole update function if running so obviously you want to save memory in the update function checking a ball isn't too much um too much of a big deal fill amount plus equals time dot delta time times 25 while fill amount is less than current speech uh, text dot length main text dot text is equal to the current speech text dot substring 
So what this is doing um, is get you're going to assign when you fill the speech instead of just setting the text you're going to set this variable for the text this this string and then you're going to count up the string essentially 25 every second 25 characters every second until it's completely filled and then you're going to set the, set the actual text the text box here is equal to a substring starting at the zero and ending at the fill amount uh, which will need to be an int because obviously the float counts up in the uh, fill amount counts up in float because you're adding time and stuff otherwise set it running equals false and main text is equal to current speech text we do this less than to make sure it's less than because if it's greater than or equal to then this will throw an error once this is greater than or equal to just set it to the full text set it to the full text instead of trying to do any of the substring stuff and then set running to false so it'll just check a ball instead of going through all this over and over again now we're going to go back into the full speech we don't want this anymore because that was what we had before instead we're just going to be setting the uh, current speech text variable equals s dot speech text and then you want to set running equals to true so that way it will actually start running if it was turned up before and of course you need to set the fill amount back to zero super simple uh, but quite effective again you can do it in a percentage sort of way I'll let you figure that out but it wasn't massively hard to do either if anything it was easier and it created different effects so if you have loads of text you can set it to come in at a fixed time and said so you want every block of text to come in at, in like five seconds for example hey it's Armin here again with another type Unity in. tutorial this one covers the easiest scriptable objects for the easy creation of the or will I <laughs> so yeah um, I hope that helped I'm pretty sure that was everything I can go through the three scripts these are the, th the three original scripts as you can see they look almost identical i'm pretty sure i haven't added anything else or missed out anything and that should be the whole the whole of my dialogue system i'm not sure how long this took what was the latest video the latest video was five minutes oh man i really hope i was under half an hour overall for such a simple system but i guess we'll see i also hope the constant sounds of me just scratching my beard did not come through too hard on the mic anyway thanks for watching and uh, i hope it helps